I'm your tutor. I'll be starting with uh, senior secondary class one government. My name is Justice Otunwe. We start with the importance of government. First, it helps people to know their rights and duties. Again, it educates people about the form of government that is practiced in the state or in their society. Further, it helps to solve day-to-day -day problems. With the knowledge of government, people are able to manage your relationship with other people. Next is prospect of government. Question is, where does a graduate of government hope to get him or herself? First, a graduate of government or any government related course at that can work with government agencies or parastatals. He or she can also be a teacher in a secondary school or a lecturer in the university or any tertiary institution. Again, he can be an analyst, political analyst, I mean. The next is defining government. What is government? We can define government from three different aspects. First, as an institution of the state. Second, as a process or art of governing. And third, as an academic field of study. As an institution of the state, government has to do with the body and agencies that are responsible for making and implementation of law in a state or a society. As a process or art of governing, Government has to do with the agencies through which the powers of the states are exercised. And third, as an academic field of study, government studies the relationship among nations and organizations. Next is the institutions of government. First is the legislature. Second is the executive. And finally, the judiciary. There are three in number. The legislature makes the law, the executive interpret the laws, and the judiciary, the executive rather implement the laws, and the judiciary interpret the laws. We shall now concentrate on characteristics slash functions of government. First of all, we know that the major function of government is to maintain law, peace, and order among the citizens. It does this through agencies of, for instance, the police. The next is the formulation of policy. It is the job of the government to formulate policies that would affect the lives of its citizens positively. The government equally enacts law and implements them. And again, the government has the responsibility to protect the citizens from external aggression, and this it does oftentimes through the armed forces. Now, the powers of the government is exercised in a state. So the question now is, what is a state? We shall be adopting the definition of Smith Zucher, who defines a state as a politically organized body of people occupying a definite territory and living under a government free from external control. Three things are notable in this definition. One, politically organized body of people, so we say people. Second, we've got to do with a territory that is defined. Again, it must be sovereign or free from external interferences. Futures of the states. When we talk about the definite territory, we were referring to boundary. When we talk about a body of people, we were referring to population. And when we talk about independence, we say a state is free from external control. The next is relationship between the states and the government. Of course, you cannot have a government without a state, and you cannot have a state without a government. So from that point, we begin to see the relationship. So government is the administrative machinery through which the will of the state is realized. 
the job of the state is to make sure that citizens live in peace and harmony. And these cannot be achieved if there is no government. Again, government is an agency through which laws are formulated. And when these laws are formulated, they benefit the people living in a particular geographical location, that is the state. So through the government, the state is able to implement laws, formulated laws and policies. The next thing that will engage our attention right now is the subfields of government. Yes, government has been divided into subfields. The first is the local government, followed by the public administration and the international relations. These are the subfields of government. Now, I am going to be giving you some exercise. One, what is government? Or rather, why is it important to study government in school? I'll help you answer that question. We study government so that we know our duties and our rights. We study government so that we come to terms with the particular form of government being practiced in our state or in our society. Second, define the term state and state its attributes. We have said that a state is an organized group of people living in a particular geographical location free from external interference. Attributes of the state, it must have a defined territory, there must be people, population, and of course, very importantly, there must be an established government. How would you define the term government? We have defined it as an institution of the state, as a process of governing, and as a field of study. Next, we basic concepts in government. The first basic concept in government, government we shall be considering is power. This is the capacity to control the behavior of others. Now, we have powers in eight different forms. The first is military, and the second is political, and the next is economic. We shall now talk about authority as the second concept of government. Unlike what we said earlier about power, authority is the power to give orders. We have political authority. Political authority is the recognition of the rights to rule. When the rights of people are recognized, or their rights rather to rule are recognized, we say that such persons possess political authority. Now, political authority can be gotten from different aspects. One, the constitution. The constitution, right inside the constitution, we have entrenched powers given to political rulers. Again, it's charisma. Certain people get political authority because of perhaps their gift of the gab, their eloquence, and their ability to make people do certain things even out of their will. The next is intelligence. People get political authority because of the amount of intelligence they exude or express. We shall now be talking about the differences between power and authority. It does appear that both terms can be used interchangeably. But no, there is indeed a notable difference between the both. First, while authority is the right to direct others, power is the capacity to use force. Again, authority is associated with influence, but power is associated with force. And finally, obedience to power is assured because of fear of sanctions that could be